Hello my dear students. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharambe. I've been teaching anatomy for the last 25 years and I love it. Today I am going to talk about chromosomal abnormalities. This is a part of chromosomal abnormality series of lectures that I've been taking over the last few weeks. So question number 1, what is a chromosomal abnormality? So if there is a change in the number or in the structure or in the arrangement of any chromosome then we call it a chromosomal abnormality so what are the types of abnormal chromosomes abnormal chromosomes can be structural abnormal chromosomes can be numerical when do i say it is structural when a bit of chromosome is broken off it is lost it is attached here and there then the structure of the chromosome changes in which case you call it a structural chromosomal abnormality but if there is a change in the number for example the number is increased such as trisomy 21 or the number is decreased such as turner syndrome in that case you call it a numerical chromosomal abnormality so i've already taken a series of lectures on structural chromosomal anomalies the link for which is given in the description section today we're going to talk about turner syndrome which is a type of numerical chromosomal abnormality okay so let's quickly see what we have understood if there is a change in the shape of the chromosome if a bit is lost attached here or there okay then we call it structural chromosomal abnormality but if the entire chromosome is increased in number or it is decreased in number number of chromosomes is altered then we call it a numerical chromosomal abnormality one of the numerical chromosomal abnormalities that we know is turner syndrome which is what we are going to learn today okay right so how are we going to cover this topic one i'm going to introduce you to the concept of numerical chromosomal abnormalities and how do they develop it's very interesting i hope you enjoy it as much as i do and then of course i will talk about turner's syndrome okay so let's dive in okay Again ma'am you brought horses and chimpanzees and dogs on your screen again yes i've got them because they have a place here every animal mammal has their own set of chromosomes for example horses have 64 chimpanzees have 40 and dogs have 78 chromosomes okay similarly man has 46 chromosomes the diploid number in man is 46 the haploid number that is carried by a gamete okay a one from the father one from the mother is 23 any difference in these basic numbers can occur because of something called as the non disjunction can you say it once non disjunction right so this number that you are seeing as a constant 46 is altered if there is something called non disjunction happening in the parent okay so let's see what is non disjunction non disjunction is a genetic event in which homologous chromosomes that means chromosome pair of 1 pair of 2 or xy also are homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids refuse to segregate into two daughter cells at the time of meiosis okay or even mitosis but meiosis is what we are talking about today so if you have two chromosomes that don't segregate in meiosis or two chromatids that don't segregate in meiosis then the condition is called non disjunction you must be thinking ma'am ye kuch jama nahi didn't understand let's use images to understand i always tell you images speak way more than words come on so here what you're seeing on the screen is the normal meiosis 1 and 2 okay so this cell that you're seeing is the normal cell that is going into gametogenesis in meiosis 1 what should you want you want the two chromosomes to go to each daughter cell so yes it happens in meiosis 1 one of a pair goes to each of the daughter cells no now the cell goes into meiosis 2 this time you if you recall the chromosomes split in the center one chromatid from each goes to the daughter cell accordingly you can see one chromatid each has segregated into daughter cell so as you can see four 
normal haploid gametes are produced. Take a good look at this image because this is where the abnormalities are going to happen in the next slide. Okay, so parent cell, meiosis 1, meiosis 2, formation of normal haploid gametes. Okay, now let's see where the problem lies in numerical chromosomal abnormalities. Right, so now here you are seeing the same parent cell. Okay, in meiosis 1, what the two chromosomes do? Hum saat saat hai. We will not leave each other, we are damn good friends. Okay, so what happens? The two chromosomes of a pair go to the daughter cell together. They don't segregate at all. So one daughter cell has both the pairs and other daughter cell has none of the chromosomes at all. Right. Now when this cell, this abnormal cell goes into gametogenesis, what happens? The chromatid separate to give rise to daughter cells or gametes which contain both the chromatids of a pair. Such a gamete is called as a diosomic gamete. So now you have a chromosome which instead of having twin, you have a gamete which instead of having 23 chromosomes has got 24 chromosomes. Okay. Now let's see what happens. A normal gamete comes from the parent. May it be father or may it be mother. And what happens? You have a progeny which is having two chromosomes of a pair from one parent and one chromosome of a pair from the other parent. What has happened? This is how trisomy is produced. Have you understood this? So the gamete must have only one chromosome of a pair. When it has two, it results in trisomy. Meanwhile, this other empty cell which hasn't got chrom one in even one of the chromosomes of that pair divides giving rise to a pair of gametes which is nullisomic. Just take an example. Supposing both the X's have gone to the other side and this one has got no X chromosome. Okay. So now it gives rise to two gametes which have no X chromosome at all. Okay. Now they fuse with a normal gamete. So that normal gamete was carrying X. This one has no X. The progeny has how many X? Progeny has only one X now. This is how monosomy is produced. Okay, this is extremely interesting and it's somewhat mathematical. So if any of you out there enjoy mathematics, then I think you will enjoy this. I love it. I hope you do too. So this is how trisomies and monosomies are produced. This time we saw non-disjunction in meiosis 1. Let's see if non-disjunction in meiosis 2 produces trisomy again. Come on, let's take a look. Normal parent cell, meiosis 1, normal. Chromosomes decide to segregate into daughter cells. All is fine with the world. This time, however, when meiosis 2 occurs, there is no segregation of chromatids. Both chromatids go to the same daughter cell. Formation of a diosomic gamete. Again, the leftover cell is monosomic. It's, sorry, the leftover cell is nullisomic. Okay. So one cell has got no chromosome of that pair, other cell has both the chromosomes of that pair. Now when there is fusion with a normal gamete, there is production of what? Trisome. This is how non-disjunction in meiosis 1 or non-disjunction in meiosis 2 produces trisomy slash monosomy. Please practice this on paper. This is me telling you it may look very simple now. But when you try to do this yourself, initially you will face some challenges and later on you will have what is called as a eureka moment when it just clicks in your brain and you find you feel oh this was so easy i hope you find that moment when i did this once and i drew it and actually i animated it i found myself thinking this is so beautiful and that's why it is here in front of you i'm sharing it with you i hope you enjoy it as much as i do of course, the end product of these abnormal divisions results in numerical chromosomal abnormalities, which is what is the topic for today. Right, so what causes disjunction? Why do non-disjunctions really occur? Non-disjunctions occur because if you are exposed to ionizing radiations, which is what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, or maybe you have some viruses, you have some, you are exposed to chemical carcinogens. Now this is where we make our point. When a lot of factories release a lot of 
chemical into the environment, let it be in water, let it be in the air, we are breathing it in. Why are we pro protesting against it? Because we are saying that these are carcinogens. These can trigger of non-disjunctions in our body resulting in these abnormalities. So this is these chemical carcinogens can trigger non-disjunction. Also late paternal and maternal age. Why do we say have your children early? Not because we want to see grandchildren. No. We want you to have your children early because human body was made such that uh, as you age, there is more and more chance of abnormalities occurring, such as non disjunction related abnormalities. Some specific genes themselves promote non disjunction So this is a uh, basic that you find in many of my lectures. Use this in every lecture which is related to any chromosomal abnormality. Right. Students, if you are enjoying this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Okay. All right. Let's now get into what are numerical chromosomal abnormalities. If I say what is heteroploid, something is heteroploid, what does it mean? Heteroploid is any chromosomal abnormality in number other than normal. Pause. Think. If the number of chromosome is increased by 1, increased by 2, we call it aneuploid. What do we call it? Aneuploid. So, 2n is the diploid number plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 is called aneuploid. So if, for example, or even minus 1 for that matter. So minus 1, monosomy. Plus 1, trisomy. Plus 2, tetrasomy. This is the series you find in aneuploid. But if I have a whole multiple of my basic number, if I have my haploid number is n, suppose I have 3n, multiples, 4n. In that case, you call it polyploidy. What do we call it? Polyploidy. Okay, so triploid 3n, tetraploid 4n. So you must be wondering, ma'am, are there really people like this in the world who have multiples of haploid? There aren't. There aren't. Why are there not such people available in the world? Because most of these are lethal. If such a baby is really conceived, it's going to get aborted. So these findings are usually found in abortuses. When patient aborts and you have the abortus, you can examine it and you will find maybe it was polyploid, triploid, tetraploid and so on. So these are not people who see the light, okay? These are just things that we need to understand are causes of abortions, okay? Right. So, but then there are some numerical chromosomal abnormalities with which some amount of life is possible. I'm not saying they live their entire life, no. But they are associated with live birth. Okay. What are these abnormalities? One is trisomies. Only trisomy 21, 18 and 13 is associated with live birth. All other children, if conceived, will be aborted. Abnormalities in sex chromosomes, such as monosomy X, XXY Kleinefelters are again associated with long life, normal long life. So these are chromosomal abnormalities that we need to study. Why do we need to study them? Because they are associated with life. So in my coming lectures, I will be taking a lecture on trisomy, a lecture on Turner syndrome and a lecture on Kleinefelters. What is it that we are discussing today? We are discussing Turner syndrome also called as monosomy X or gonadal dysgenesis. Take a deep breath, students. Maybe you can get a cup of coffee for yourself. I've got mine with me. You know I can't take lectures without my coffee cup. Okay, so if you're ready, then let's begin our discussion on Turner syndrome. I'm well aware that you've been taught this in your school years. So it's the initial part of my lecture, which was more of an understanding based lecture. Turner's, I'm confident you will be able to manage almost 30% of the class without me teaching you. There is still a 70% you need to listen to. Okay, let's begin then. Right. So monosomy X, Turner's syndrome. There's a story to it. Let's listen to the story. It was in 1938 that Turner's syndrome was described as a syndrome by doctors. 
Were they aware of the chromosomal abnormality then? No, they were not. Later in 1959, they found out that, oh, this person has one X chromosome less. So, from 1938 to 1959, the syndrome was described, but the chromosomal abnormality was not. Right. So, now we write Turner's syndrome as 45X. Incidence of live female infants is 1 in 2500 to 3000. But listen to this. But out of all chromosomal abnormalities leading to abortions, one fifth of the cases are Turner's. So what do we understand? That Turner's syndromes are very often conceived, but they are very often aborted. Very few of them actually are born alive. Okay. So this is a very commonly conceived abnormality, but very often aborted abnormality. Okay. Right. Uh, now there's a female here. On your screen there are a lot of symptoms given here am I going to read all that no all this jargon that I have given is for you to pause the video and study when you are giving your exams okay otherwise I'm going to just teach you what is on the screen in this woman because I don't believe in reading, reading PPTs I just dislike it intensely how do I remember so let's take a look the first thing you will see is that this lady has got a short stature, okay? Then, she has a low hairline at the nape of the neck. Take a look at the image. She's got webbing of the neck. Let's first concentrate on the head neck region. Low hairline, webbing of the neck. She can also have epicanthal folds. What is epicanthal folds, students? Epicanthal folds is what we see in the Mongol race when there is a fold over the, over the eye. She may also have high arched palate. She may have abnormal teeth. She will have visual difficulties. It is likely that she will have a strabismus. She may even have a hearing problems. Okay. Related to the chest, what do you see? You see that she has a shield chest. She has a wide chest with broadly placed nipples. She has got coarctation of aorta very likely. Okay. So this is what we see. See, when you use an image, you use it for your own understanding. See the picture and try to see how much of it will help you to memorize. You can see low nape, low hairline in the neck. You can see webbing of the neck. You can see shield chest. You can see coarctation of aorta. What else does she have? Yeah. Her IQ is quite normal. It isn't that she's got mental retardation. However, her female sexual characteristics are a little different. She's got poorly developed breasts. She's got juvenile external genitalia. She may have streak. She will have streak ovaries. She will not start her menses at all. She will have amenorrhea. Now, this is something very important. Please remember this. We'll be discussing this later. She will have renal abnormalities such as horseshoe kidney and so on. Her skin will look slightly edematous, always puffy skin. Okay, And she'll have a long increased carrying angle okay i'm sure you know what's carrying angle if you don't then go back to supex and study okay so she'll also have something called as positive metacarpal sign shortened digits of the fourth and the fifth finger okay um, before i go to my next slide have you noted that i have kept certain part of her body covered now this there is a reason for it remember students these are people who have come to you with an abnormality. But they are young individuals who are themselves suffering. We must be sensitive to their suffering. We cannot expose them and, exp and tell them that your patient this is the way it is. No, they have every right to their dignity, even as a patient and even as an individual in society. So whenever when you are using their images also, you must be careful about which part of their body you are exposing. And that's just, this is just a diagram. But this is a lesson I'm trying to pass on to you. In fact, be also careful while exposing their faces. Because you may use certain part of them to teach something. But you cannot expose their identity. Basics, ethics of behavior. Okay? Right. So question is, yes, she's a Turner's baby. When is she detected? Ma'am, can we prevent Turner's syndrome? Okay, let's understand that. 
she may be detected when she her mother's pregnant there are some ultrasonographic changes in which you can tell that this baby is a turner's okay or you can do prenatal testing for example you can do a amniocentesis aspirate amnio amniotic fluid tested by karyotyping or you can do chorionic villus sampling take a small bit of the chorionic villi test it karyotyping will clearly show you lack of one x chromosome if not then maybe the child is detected at birth maybe the child is detected in the childhood or most likely she is detected when she hits puberty does not develop female sexual characteristic as much as expected and does not start her menses at all now the parents begin to worry she is 14 she is not starting her periods what to do and that's when they are likely to come to the doctor oblique they may not see there is something called as um lack of awareness she may come to the doctor when she hits infertility she says i've been married for so many years i'm not conceiving okay it's so infertility is also a positive a possible presenting symptom so what tests will you do you will do blood tests you will see that she has got lesser estrogen and progesterone levels you can do simple buccal smear i have taught you this when i did bar body lecture with you just do a buccal smear test it under the microscope if she is a normal female she will show bar body if she is a turner syndrome she's got only one x can you inactivate that one x no so she will have no bar body very simple okay so apply the formula nx minus 1 1 my 1x minus 1 is equal to 0 right so what can we do for her ma'am she is she is having a chromosomal abnormality it is an abnormality present in her every cell what can we do for her i'm glad you're asking this question this is what she'll come to you with she will say i have got a genetic abnormality what can you do for me you're not going to be able to cure it right so what will you do for her let's take a look manage her associated conditions she is going to have them she is going to have thyroid problem she is going to have blood pressure manage those problems give her growth hormone so that she doesn't look tiny she grows to her somewhat normal height okay give her estrogen therapy so that she looks as much female as you can help her out to look uh, the estrogen will also protect her from the osteoporosis that she is likely to suffer from because of lack of estrogen otherwise regular health checkups will help detect her problems early okay so all this can be done for her of course you can detect her coarctation of aorta if she has it also now let's talk about what are all the cases what are all the different karyotypes which come under turner syndrome you must be thinking ma'am you just told us it is 45x funny it is not only 45x that comes as turners there are 46x also which can come as turners let's discuss so the most commonly almost 90% of the 40 to 60% of the cases will come with 45x okay in most cases this x is paternal but there are other karyotypes which also present with a phenotype of turners the genotype and the phenotype here we use these two terms the patient comes with a phenotype of turners okay what are the genotypes that can come that way she can be a mosaic okay so she can be 45xx and part of her cell line is 45x would you expect her to have complete gamut of turner syndrome no she'll have a somewhat toned down turner syndrome so you are thinking is it turner is it not turner is it turner okay so then you do her karyotyping and find that she's a mosaic or else you can have what is called as isochromosome now if you recall i have taught this to you recently in one of my lectures isochromosome is when the chromosome splits in such a way that you've got two q arms forming one chromosome and two p arms forming one chromosome so this patient now take a look at this here you are seeing a isochromosome xq so what happens that she begins to show all signs of sim turner syndrome when you do bar body will you get a bar body or not yes you'll get a bar body isn't it because she's got two x's so you'll get a bar body you might get a larger bar body because there are two q's now on one chromosome but 
the part of the X chromosome, the P arm, which is responsible for normal sexual development, is not there at all in her body. So what happens? She looks and is a turner. But is she having a loss of X chromosome? No. So she is not 45X, but she is still a Turner's syndrome. Similarly, you may see an X isochromosome XP, 2P arms. This person has all normal sexual characteristics. She looks like a female, but she's got streak over this, which is what is the indicative of underlying Turner's syndrome. What are the other karyotypes then, which will also look like Turner's? You can have deletions, like you can have a deletion of the P arm, you can have deletion of the Q arm, okay? of the X chromosome, of course. You can have ring X chromosome. You can have translocations of X chromosome. A bit of X is translocated on the other X. A bit of X is translocated on some other autosome. Bit of X is translocated on the Y chromosome. All this comes under Turner's syndrome. Pause, think, see if you can remember. 45X is Turner's. 46X with the isochromosome Q or isochromosome P is also Turner's. Ring X is also Turner's. Deletion XQ, deletion XP is also Turner's. Translocation X is also Turner's. So this is how, if you revise it, you will be able to remember all this easily. Right. So now we come to the reason why we study Turner's. I studied it because I, I like medicine, I want to understand it. But you studied it partly because you know there is a short note coming for you on Turner's syndrome. Let's be frank about it, isn't it? So, how will you write the short note? Remember only the headings, okay? Rest should come automatically. First thing you will do is you will talk about what is a chromosomal abnormality. Then what are numerical, what are structural chromosomal abnormalities. And then you explain how monosopies can occur with non-disjunction. Remember I told you how non-disjunction occurs? You explain that in the form of a diagram. Now begin to talk about Turner's syndrome. What is Turner? When was it discovered? When was the actual abnormality discovered and so on? What is its incidence? Then talk about clinical features. When is the condition likely to be detected? What are the tests you can conduct? What are the investigations? And finally, how will you treat this patient? Okay, and last thing you will do is you will give the whole cytogenetics of Turner's 45X, 46 isochromosome X and so on and that completes your short note. Students, if you have enjoyed this lecture, do please like and subscribe to my channel. I, will, I would love to make more of these informative lectures for you. One MCQ before we go. Yes, let's see if you can solve it. Following is true for Turner's syndrome except patient has only one X chromosome, fine. Patient has poorly developed female sexual characteristics, yes, fine. Patient has tall stature, not sure. Patient has primary amenorrhea, yes. So tall stature, am I right? No. What is the stature of the patient? She is short, okay. Knowledge makes solving MCQs much easier. Get knowledge, solve MCQs, okay. So students, I will not say I enjoy taking this lecture. I feel the responsibility of taking these important topics for you, which affect your future behavior with patients, which also come as very common short notes for you. Every time you study chromosomal abnormalities, not only should you get knowledge, you should allow yourself to feel for each of these patients. Okay, all right. So it was my honor having to have taken this class. I hope you enjoyed it. See you across the screen in some other video. Thank you.